that's a good one for Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones or whoever. So start doing that. You will find by the end of this program, you may have some action points. You should have plenty of them by the end of the program. So Sarah and I are already typing up lots of questions, uh, answers to questions. But let's start with some basic concepts here. Why is there an urgency to do planning at year end? And remember, we're into the last month. This is it. So that's why you should be making a list of people to contact. And I would say within the next week or two, because as you get closer to the holidays, things uh, people are busy and who knows, now is the time to do it. Always be aware of the incredible low income tax rates we have right now. You should have this chart on your desk for everyone to see. These rates are here now. We don't know what the future is going to be, but we know about the deficit. Look at that. You've all seen the numbers from the Congressional Budget Office. I mean, we're in the worst shape deficit and debt-wise since the end of World War II, 1946 when rates went up to over 90%. We have a historically high national debt. Even the Wall Street Journal, when they released these numbers back in September, the Wall Street Journal even said, one way or another, we're going to be paying this off. There's no such thing as free borrowing. At some point, the rates have got to get, uh, the debt has got to get paid. The bill will come due. It's just a matter of when. So this tells you that tax deferred retirement savings are in jeopardy of getting hit with future higher taxes. Think about the clients you have with large 401ks and IRAs. Remind them that this is all tax-deferred money. It will be taxed at some future rate, maybe a lot higher than it is today. So the plan is to take advantage of these low tax rates. And remember, the core foundational principle of all good tax planning is to always pay taxes at the lowest rates. That may be now. Just to give you a little history, some of you may know this, but after World War II, when we were in the same shape financially we are in today, the tax rates, as I said, got jacked up. In fact, for all the years the baby boomers like me, and maybe some of you, many of you, were born, those were years 1946 to 1964. Do you know that the top federal tax rate for each of those years exceeded 90, that's 90, 90%, 1946 to 1964, except for the last year, 1964, when the Beatles came to America and everybody was so happy, they dropped the top federal tax rate all the way down to get this, only 77%. Mark Twain had a saying, he said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And you know the other saying, those who don't learn from history are bound to repeat it. It's urgent that your clients who qualify, and again, not everything is for everybody. This is where you put on your advisor hat and say, this is right for this client, and not everything is all or nothing. See what's right, but the plan is to take advantage of these low rates and start moving that money into tax-free territory and, and bring down that debt, that tax building up in the IRA before it gets hit with much higher taxes in the future. So here are the seven strategies. Roth conversions, obviously always a good topic at year end. Coronavirus-related distributions. Now, this one's not planning as much. I put it there because it ends after this year. That's it. So it's a last-ditch effort for people that were affected. This is, this is what I mean. You may have somebody that fell on hard times, either financially or with illness because of the COVID. Maybe you contact these people and say, you know, if you really need it, this may be the, uh, the last chance for you to take advantage of this relief. NUA, I'll get into the details of that, but we see lots of buildup because of the market appreciation in company stock tied with massive layoffs. This is a scenario that can be taken advantage not now. Item four, qualified charitable distributions. Not available to everyone, but anybody that gives to charity can benefit by doing this. Life insurance. This is a way of replacing the stretch IRA, which was eliminated by the SECURE Act, and turning taxable IRA money into tax-free tax -free income. It can be income during retirement or tax-free 
fund of money to use during retirement, cash value, of course, I'm talking about, and I'll get into that when we get into, into that, and to pass, to transfer wealth to beneficiaries tax-free. All of these are designed to save on taxes. That's where the big money is, to transfer value, to save taxes, and do it at the ta most tax-efficient way. And then we have lifetime gifting strategies. This is of particular interest to clients, especially at year-end, and of course, estate planning after the SECURE Act. So let's dig in with the first item, Roth conversions. Actually, that was one of the first questions that clicked in here when we just started the program. And one of the, the question was, is doing a Roth conversion a good idea, even if there's no RMDs? <laughs> that was good. Who asked that question? I can't even see who asked that question. But whoever did, that was a great question. I can't see the name on here. I'm sure if I click somewhere, I can. But anyway, uh, that was a great question. That was the first item I wanted to cover. Yes, we know that the CARES Act waived RMDs for 2020. So, what about Roth conversions? Does it pay to do them? Well, even if not subject, and I'll get to those in a minute, actually. Let me, I think the Roth conversions comes right after that. Yeah. Uh, now I'm just talking about getting into the Roth conversions, but not just Roth conversions. In other words, I'm saying even though there are, for your clients that are subject to RMDs, sh even though they're waived, should they take them voluntarily? And the answer is maybe to take advantage of those low rates. Remember the low rates? To take advantage of these low rates. This is what you want to do. So you may look at each client and say, well, you know, I can get a lot of money out at the 12% or maybe 22% or even 24% bracket. Maybe it pays. Even though they are not subject to RMDs, it might pay to, to pay some tax now to lower that IRA balance, and that will lower their future RMDs because it will be based on a lower balance. So you're using up today's lower brackets and begin reducing that IRA debt, and then you have freedom of the use of the money to do, like I said, Roth conversions or move to cash value life insurance or gifting or anything they want. So this is a, an opportunity that the window is closing on. I'm talking specifically about the Roth conversions. Normally, when somebody is subject to Roth conversions, those conversions cannot be, uh, those RMDs, when somebody is subject to RMDs is what I meant, those RMDs cannot be converted. That's just the law. But because there's no RMDs this year, the amount they might have taken can be converted, but that's only a window of opportunity for the next few weeks until the year ends. So this is a one-time chance to take advantage and get money out. Normally, it's more expensive to convert to a Roth IRA when you're in RMD mode because you first have to take the RMD, then pay tax on that. Then you can convert the balance, but it's a lot more expensive. So this is an opportunity just for 2020, what's left of 2020. So you should be evaluating a Roth conversion, literally with every client that has an IRA or 401k, and see if it pays to pay some taxes now to lock in a tax-free, income tax-free account in a Roth IRA for life. You may end up, and this is what I'm finding, where most clients would do well by not doing everything. That may be extreme, and it costs a lot of money, by doing a series of annual smaller conversions, so over time they start bringing down their IRA balance and bringing up their tax-free Roth balance. And remember, to count as a 2020 Roth conversion, the funds must leave the IRA by the end of the year. Now, it's interesting. Let's say uh, the client decides at the very last minute, December 28th or something, and they decide they want to convert. If the money comes out of the IRA before year end, even if it doesn't get into the Roth till January 4th, that's still a 2020 Roth conversion. But be careful. Be very careful. Remember, you have to make sure the clients have the money to pay the tax on the conversion because conversions are permanent. This has been the case since the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act a few years ago. Conversions are permanent. There are no do-overs. You, you don't get a second crack. There's no more recharacterizations. That's out. 
for Roth conversion. So you better make sure they can pay the tax. They will owe the money. Now that shouldn't be a reason not to do a conversion, but they will owe the money. So be careful about that. One thing you want to do, and now is the perfect time to do it. What a great time to have this program. Do an income projection because, again, I just said you're going to need to know they have the money to pay the tax. Well, how much tax would there be? Well, that's where you have to do an income projection. And the way to do that is start with the 2019 tax return. But the benefit of having this evaluation or conversation at year end, most of the income items are in by now, or they will be in a few days. I'm talking about the mutual funds, the throw off the capital gain distributions. You know, if they have business income or losses, for example, you may find, unfortunately, some small business owners took a real uh, hit in their business and may have very low income. We've seen a few situations where a business actually took such a hit, they had a tremendous loss. That's a tax-deductible loss, let's say a pass-through loss on an S-Corp or a partnership like that, and they have negative income. If that's a client of yours and they have an IRA, they should be converting everything uh, up to whatever would be tax-free to use up that negative income. Otherwise, that could be lost in future years, the opportunity. Also remember, those people who have unemployment income. Some people forget, but that's taxable. So you have to do a good income projection. You start with last year's taxes, but this year, for many of your clients, it may be nothing like last year to base it on. Why? Because loss in income or spikes in income. Look for spikes or drops in income. Things they have, they have this year they didn't have last year. So you can accurately project the tax on a Roth conversion because once they convert, that amount will be owed. So you want to give them some projection. If you're not the CPA, work in tandem with the CPA. That's the way we always did it. We start with last year's return, and then we do a projection based on what's coming in so far this year. And like I said, you're already in December, so you have a good idea of what's coming in by now. So what are the benefits when you talk to clients? This should be review for most of you, but once you convert, the big benefit, you pay a tax up front. There's no question about it, but what do you get for your money? Because that's what clients want to know. You lock in today's low rates, and that may be a big tax savings, a fortune in savings for some people. And the Roth IRA, they grow tax-free, income tax-free forever. And the best part is no lifetime required minimum distributions. Now, when I say they grow income tax-free forever, remember, you still have the SECURE Act. So by forever, I mean during the client's life. But even after death under the SECURE Act with the 10-year rule, you can still have 10 more years of tax-free buildup. So by doing that, yes, you pay some tax up front, but you'll have lower taxes in the future. And the big item is you remove the uncertainty of what future higher taxes can do to a client's retirement savings. There's a couple of myths, too, about Roth conversions when you talk to clients. You know, I hear this all the time. The uh, client says, I'll be in a lower bracket in retirement. That is often not the case, especially with a married couple. When one spouse dies, the remaining spouse gets hit with what I call the widow's penalty. The surviving spouse they file now as single. They have the same income, roughly, as the couple both had together, and now their rates are jacked up. So now they wish they did the Roth IRA. And, you know, this is a question that clients and accountants ask me all the time. What if taxes don't increase or they go even lower? Because I always say, you know, I look at the math, I say taxes have to go up, and that's where the benefit of a Roth is. If you believe tax rates will stay the same or increase in the future, the Roth wins hands down long term. But some clients say, what if our tax rates don't increase, which I find unlikely, or what if my tax rates go don't increase or go lower? Here's the great part that I love about the Roth IRA. What's the downside? You're locked in a 0% income tax rate for retirement, and for at least 10 years through your beneficiaries. 
Again, the Roth removes the uncertainty of what future higher rates can do to a client's standard of living in retirement. What you did, the downside, the worst case scenario is you paid some tax now, but you locked in a 0% tax rate. You can't beat a 0% tax rate. So the downside, the worst case scenario is not too bad. That's Roth conversions. Hopefully you were thinking of some people that, you know, maybe I should have this conversation. Now to coronavirus-related distributions. As I said, this is not really a planning vehicle, something I wouldn't plan for because it's a very negative situation. I put this on the list of seven because there's an urgency to it. This provision ends in less than 30 days. Actually, technically, due to a, the way the law was written, it ends after December 30th, not 31st. So don't try this on the last day of the year. Technically, it ends on December 30th. So what's the benefit? Well, you may have a client that got hit either with illness or financially due to the COVID pandemic. And what is the relief? What are the benefits? Well, if a client needs money, and the last place I would take money from, even with these relief provisions, is from a retirement account. But these are the clients that are desperate. They're in dire need of money. You may know some of these people, and these are the people that should be aware that this option is still around, but only for the rest of this year, and then that's it, never to be heard of again. So a CRD, a coronavirus-related distribution, a CRD, allows retirement accounts, distributions from retirement accounts to be made up to $100,000. That's aggregate, not each account. And it's exempt from the 10% early distribution penalty for those under 59 and a half. Now, some advisors tell me they only look at people under 59 and a half. It also applies if you're over 59 and a half. Even if you have no penalty, you can take advantage of the other two benefits, which means that the income, the distribution you take now, can be spread over three years' tax returns, and all a part of it can be repaid back to an IRA or company plan, depending on the plan. So these are big benefits. It's $100,000 overall limit. Who qualifies? Well, here's the laundry list. Basically two categories, health or is illness related, and then financial, financially related. So here are the health and illness related, diagnosed, spouse, dependent. You could see the list. You can get that list anywhere. And an individual who experiences adverse financial consequences or uh, adverse financial consequences due to the individual, a spouse, or a member of the household having COVID-related issues. And there's the whole laundry list of those who qualify as an affected person. Not everybody qualifies for a CRD. You still have to qualify under these conditions, the ones I just mentioned, the health-related ones or the income-related ones. So here are all the income-related ones, the loss of income due to being quarantined, furloughed, unable to work, closing of a business, reduction in pay, even having a job offer rescinded or having a start date delayed. And it also applies to the member of the individual's household. So that could be a friend or a relative or even a roommate that had these issues. So start thinking about some of the clients, prospects, people you've spoken to, beneficiaries that had these issues. These apply to beneficiaries as well well. So you may have people that, for example, in January, February, March, early in the year, everything was fine. But now we have a resurgence in this virus. You may find that situations have changed. People you spoke to even three months ago, all of a sudden, they got laid off, they, they got sick. Maybe they need help now. Maybe their circumstances have changed. That's what makes you a great advisor to get out there and be proactive and ask again if they might qualify from some of these because it ends. There's an urgency. That's, so that's why it's on my list of these seven items. When will the taxes on CRDs be due? They have the three-year income spread. Or some of them may choose to include all the income in one year in 2020. But that decision doesn't have to be made till they do their tax returns next year, early next year. So you can put that one on hold, but that's something to think about. I'm sure we'll be running programs on that. That's going to be a big issue early next year. Should I take the income and spread it over three years? Should I put it all in in one year or do repayments? Remember, you can do repayments too. 
So when can be repayments be made? Three years. And the repayment can go to an IRA or a plan if the plan allows. So that's just something to remember. You may have clients and prospects in the contacts that may have these last few days of the year to take advantage of CRDs. Net unrealized appreciation in employer securities. If you don't know what that is, that's the ability to turn ordinary income from a 401k, let's say, into capital gain. That's a big deal now. That's another thing that's on the table. Everybody's worried about the election. Will tax rates go up? We don't know. Uh, they're talking about capital gain rates. This may be, to, be the time to identify the clients and contacts, again, that may benefit from this. Who are they? People with company stock in their company plan. Only the company stock in the 401k, for example. So if they work for IBM, it only applies to the IBM stock within their 401k. If it's highly appreciated, there may be a huge benefit. The way it works, it has to be a lump sum distribution. So you don't have much time to get this done. If you haven't started the process, remember, everything's got to come out uh, in one calendar year, and there's not much left to this calendar year. So everything comes out. The non company stock items like the mutual funds and other assets can be rolled over tax free to an IRA or converted to a Roth and the company stock gets withdrawn in kind as stock to a taxable brokerage account and they only pay tax on the cost. The appreciation is not taxed until the stock is sold and when it's sold automatic long-term capital gain rates even if it's sold the day later. So that's the scenario you should be thinking of clients. Now, we've heard lots of stories with the run-up in the market combined with layoffs and early retirees or, un uh, or unexpected retirements. But they have all this stock, a company stock that has massive appreciation. These are the candidates for this tax move at year end. So here's how it might work, a little diagram here. You have the company plan. Is there a triggering event? Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me move ahead to that. Who qualifies? Have you hit a trigger event? You have to ask the clients three questions. Do you have company stock in your plan? Obviously, it only applies to company stock of the company you're working for. Is it highly appreciated? Because that's the big benefit. For example, you have a stock that you the, the client bought for 100000 but now it's worth a million. We're seeing a lot of these from clients that have been working, uh, longevity, been in a company 20 or 30 years. So some companies, they've only been in for five years or so, but the stock just had a giant run-up. Is it highly appreciated? And do they qualify for NUA by having a qualifying event or a trigger event? There are four of them, a, but mainly two for most of your clients, reaching age 59 and a half or separation from service, also death and disability. So those are the trigger events. So you start with the company plan, has stock, was there a trigger event? All right, let's say there was. The gold bars above say, all right, you have the highly appreciated stock, you pay income, on the, income tax on the original cost, and then the stock gets transferred in kind. It does not get sold. The transfer of shares in kind to the non-qualified or taxable brokerage account. The other assets, you, you have two choices. You can move them uh, as a tax-free IRA rollover or pay the tax, convert to a Roth IRA or cash out. So when that's done correctly, the future appreciation uh, the, the future, the appreciation in the stock while it was held within the plan, that's the NUA, gets subject to long-term capital gains rather than ordinary rates. So it locks in again today's low rates. And remember, once the stock is removed from the plan, there are no RMDs, no penalties. Now, there could be a penalty if the client is under age 55 for a plan because the penalty is on the amount taxable. But if, if the amount taxable is very low. This may be the one time it pays to pay the 10% penalty to get that stock out. No limitations on how the funds can be used or when the stock can be sold. Whenever it's sold, it's long-term capital gain rates, less problems for heirs, and easier access 
for stretch IRA alternatives. Now you can use that money maybe to fund life insurance or charitable remainder trusts or for gifting, things we're going to talk about soon. So that's how NUA works in a nutshell. There's obviously a lot more than that. In fact, we spend a, quite a bit of time on that in our two-day program. What you're getting here is a snapshot of what you get at our tremendous two-day virtual programs I'll tell you about a little later in this program. I see the questions are going off the charts. Sarah and Ian are typing away. They actually do typing calisthenics to get ready for all your questions. This is unheard of. They're hitting question after question live, real time, while I'm giving you this information. What a fantastic way to learn. Qualified item four of the seven. We're getting there. Qualified Charitable Distributions, or QCDs. The only negative of this is that it doesn't apply to more people. These only apply to IRA owners or IRA beneficiaries who are 70 and a half years old or older. That's it. What is a QCD? It's a transfer from an IRA, not from a plan, remember, only for IRAs. This may be a reason to get a rollover into an IRA if somebody qualifies because it doesn't, it doesn't qualify from a plan. It's a direct transfer from the IRA to a qualifying charity. And when the funds come, go to the charity, guess what? They're excluded from income. This is the way to give. Why is this so valuable? Because most of your clients, and you should be writing down names of some of your big givers, do get, they get no tax benefit out of the gifts they're making. Now, I'm not saying to make big gifts to get a tax benefit. And if I said that, then I'd give everything and you'd have no tax. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing the gifting they're already doing, but doing it this way if they qualify by being an IRA owner or IRA beneficiary age 70 and a half or older. It's a direct transfer. The charity gets the full amount, and it's excluded from income. Most clients are not getting any benefit from their current gifts because most of them, since the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, take the standard deduction. It's a higher deduction, so most of them don't itemize. This is a way to get better than a tax deduction. An exclusion from income is way better than a tax deduction because it knocks down AGI, adjusted gross income, a key item on a tax return that determines the level of benefits, tax credits, deductions, and other items on a tax return. So mostly, the higher the AGI, the less benefits you get. Normally, an IRA distribution would increase AGI. Not here. If it goes to the charity doing the gifting they would have done anyway, it's excluded from income. It's a limit, and it's a very high limit, up to $100,000 per year per IRA owner, not per IRA account. What are the negatives? Like I said before, only available to IRA owners or IRA beneficiaries age 70 and a half or older. Not available from company plans, and it cannot cannot go to a donor-advised fund, a supporting organization, or a private foundation. In other words, has to go directly to the charity, not to an organization that will give it to a charity one day. Focus on the clients that do qualify. Not everybody does, but now is when the clients are thinking about gifting, making gifts. Do it this way. For those clients that qualify, you should write their names down before they start making big gifts. If they have an IRA, they're 70 and a half. This is the way to do gifting. They will save taxes on the, making the same gift. Now, the SECURE Act raised the RMD, Required Minimum Distribution Age, to 72, as many of you know. But it's interesting. The QCD age stayed at 70 and a half. So you have this gap. The question is coming up, what about during the gap? If there are no RMDs, should I even bother with QCDs? Absolutely. You're still getting money out of the IRA at zero tax cost. Remember my foundational principle of good tax planning? Always pay taxes at the lowest rates. Get that money out of the IRA in the lowest rates possible. Well, here it's zero. Zero tax cost. You're reducing the balance with money you were going to give 
anyway. IRAs are the best money to give to charity because they're loaded with taxes. If they're giving anyway, make sure they do it this way. And you can help them set it up to make sure they qualify that it's a direct transfer. As I said before, most people no longer itemize deductions. They even get larger standard deductions, people 70 and a half, for those 65 plus. So with QCDs, they get better than a deduction. They get an exclusion from income. QCDs reduce adjusted gross income. This is what I talked about before, the availability of deductions, credits, and other benefits. It can lower the amount of Social Security or Medicare Parts B and D, those IRMA charges that come out. But be careful with that one. Uh, I may date this in case this is played later, but this is December 1st we're talking. And I believe just yesterday or the day before, many of the clients got their new IRMA charges for 2021 based on the 2019 income. I know because I got mine and uh, other people I know got theirs. The problem with the IRMA charges, there's a two-year look back, so be careful with that. For example, if they lower their income now, they won't see the IRMA benefit for two years. If they do it in 2020, like now, they will see the benefit, but not till 2022. The bottom line is most people are thinking about gifts right now, especially this year when so many people need help and there are so many people that want to help. This is a great way to help them do that and get a tax benefit. There are other changes for the CARES Act. Just so you know, for the non-itemizers, you can take a $300 gift exclusion. Uh, that's without itemizing. So you get that right off the top. The question has come up for a joint return. Is it per person? Do they get 600 No. The law is clear on that. It's $300 per return, $300 per unit. But still good to know. And the 60% AGI limitation for charitable gifts is removed for this year. Both of these provisions are for this year. There's no limit. So if you have clients that really give a lot, uh, still do the QCD first if they qualify, and then use some of these other benefits because the QCD is too good to give up. And that includes gifting highly appreciated stock. First, use the QCD for your qualifying clients. Obviously, if they don't qualify, say they're not 70 and a half or they don't have an IRA, you may want to look at the highly appreciated stock. But I would be careful with that highly appreciated stock because if they hold it to death, they get a step up in basis anyway. And that capital gain is removed anyway. That's qualified charitable distributions. Let's look at life insurance. I believe life insurance, because of the SECURE Act, and I don't sell life insurance. I'm a CPA, a tax advisor. I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities, none of that. But as a tax advisor, I have to tell you, the tax exemption for life insurance is the single biggest benefit in the tax code, and most people don't use it enough. So all the SECURE Act did by eliminating the stretch IRA is incentivize more clients to do the better planning, or I should say more advisors to talk to clients about this, to do the better planning we should have been doing all along. With the life insurance plan, the clients can end up with everything they want. They don't care about the vehicle to get there. I've learned that through over 30 years of dealing with clients just like this as a practitioner, just like you. I tell them, with this plan, you can get the three things that every client wants. Larger inheritances, more control, less tax. Plus, there are lifetime benefits to life insurance. So the strategy would be, not for everybody, that's where you come in to see which clients this is right for, get that IRA paid down now. Lock in these low rates and get that money out at rock bottom prices. Then after the tax is paid, you can use that money to purchase cash value life insurance and have that money start building within a cash value life insurance policy. Now, many of your clients that that this strategy would apply to are those with the largest IRAs. Many of them name trusts as IRA beneficiaries because they have a large IRA. Those trusts generally will be problems for the most part because of the SECURE Act. With life insurance, life insurance is the best, most flexible asset to leave to a trust. You don't have any of the complications that trusts have, so it may be better to do it this way. The benefits of life insurance as a replacement for the stretch IRA or just to 
get more money to beneficiaries at zero tax cost. The benefits is the life insurance plan, and not for every client, and it may not be for everything. It could be a partial. You know, you can use parts of these strategies, maybe some Roth conversion, some life insurance. This is what makes you valuable, a customized plan that fits each client's different different personal and financial situation. So the benefits is obviously can re replace the benefits of the lost stretch IRA and the IRA trust. They're more tax efficient. There's better flexibilities. You don't have to worry about RMDs or these complex tax rules or the custodian issues or the uh, stretch IRA provisions. Even the trusts that are out there, most of them fail because they're done improperly. They're not aware of these complex IRA trust rules. The best part, no trust tax on the IRA, uh, on the life insurance, no trust tax on the life insurance policies that go to the trust. That's not the case with IRAs that are left to a trust that are held inside the trust. Something to think about. A big item for, for right now, lifetime gifting. Most people are thinking about gifts, but they don't realize the huge benefits. We've had this for years. Clients are always looking for a way to transfer wealth to their children and grandchildren at zero tax cost if possible. Uh, gifts are lifetime transfers as opposed to inheritances received after death. I'm talking about gifting. There are huge benefits to making gifts rather than leaving the, the property at death. Which clients should you talk about to year-end gifting strategies? Well, remember, we have 11580 exemption, double that for a married couple. After that, these exemptions go down. But they could be reduced by the budget constraints and who knows what kind of legislation we might have. They could be reduced earlier. I'm saying it may pay to use them now or lose them later. Three things can happen. The estate tax rate can get jacked up to where it was for many years, 55 60%. The exemption can come down and estates may increase, making the cost of inheriting at death a lot more expensive. Why? Because gift Gifting is tax exclusive. You only pay the tax if there's a gift tax situation. Let's say the exemption is used up. These are for the heavy hitter clients, but those are the clients you're interested in for this strategy. You know that saying, fish, uh, I forget what it is, something fish where the fish are. Well, these are the big fish. Let's say they used up their $11 million exemption. It would even pay to pay gift tax now because they only pay tax on the gift. Whereas if they left the same money as an inheritance, you pay tax on the tax itself. It's tax inclusive. So look at clients that may have used the exemption, very wealthy clients with millions of dollars. By doing gifting now, they can use the three tiers of tax-exempt gifting, which I'll get to in a minute, but they can also do taxable gifts where the savings uh, are immense. I mean, in some cases, the savings can be millions of dollars, millions of dollars in taxes. By doing the lifetime gifting as opposed to leaving the same money as an inheritance. For example, let me give you a simple example. Let's say a client wants to give a million dollar gift and let's say they used up the exemption already. So the gift tax now, same as the estate tax rate, is 40%. They would have to pay a $400,000 gift tax. So what's the total cash outlay? A million plus the 400,000 is a million four, but a million went to the beneficiary, the, the person that got the gift, let's say the child or grandchild. If they left that same million four as an inheritance, the whole million four is taxable. So in that case, the beneficiaries end up with much less. They lose the gifting advantage because you're paying tax on tax. Those are taxable gifts. That may only apply to the very wealthy. But here's a nice grid you can use with clients. I would print this out and go over this with clients because almost every client can take advantage of the one of these three tiers of tax-exempt gifting. You use this grid. It's amazing. I give you the three tiers of tax-exempt gifting. One is the annual exclusion gifts, the 15000 a year per person. 
If you don't use it, you lose it. And remember, these are tax-free. They don't even have to be reported on the tax return. Clients love things that are invisible on the tax return. Unless you do the husband and wife gift splitting, then you do have to report it. But you could double the amount to 30000 And it doesn't reduce the $11 million exemption. Those are the annual exclusion gifts, 15000 per recipient per year. This second category, I think, may be one of the biggest wealth transfer loopholes in the tax code and not used nearly enough. This is an exemption for direct payments. Can't go to the, to the uh, beneficiaries, the children or grandchildren. These are gifts, lifetime gifts, lifetime transfers. It can't go directly to children or grandchildren, but it can go to providers of tuition or medical expenses. And look at this one on that first line compared to the annual exclusion gifts. Annual exclusion gifts can go to anybody, by the way. It's not just family members. Many people think these 15,000s are just family members. They can go to anybody. It doesn't have to be family. <laughs> it can be people the client even likes. It doesn't have to just be family. But it's limited to 15000 per person per year. These gifts for direct payments for tuition and medical, unlimited unlimited number of people in unlimited amounts invisible on the tax return they don't have to be reported anywhere and they don't use up the exemption so remember anything that doesn't use up the exemption adds effectively to the available exemption because you got other money out it doesn't add per se to the 11 million but you can get money out without cutting into the 11 million especially as as assets increase, remember, once you make a gift, it removes the property from the estate. And once you remove the property from the estate, you remove the future appreciation from the estate. You remove the income that property throws off, which reduces income taxes immediately. And the best part, gifts are tax-free to the recipients, no matter what the amount. So the gifts are direct payments as long as they're paid directly for tuition, say to the school, the university. And it can be, it doesn't have to just be for college. Many people misunderstand that. It can be through K through 12, and it can even be for preschool. As long as there's a curriculum, a faculty, and a regularly enrolled body of students. It can't be for custodial care like babysitting. That doesn't count. But... You could have summer camps or even camps that they, you can prepay now. You can even do that. They have computer camps or math camps. Uh, there were rulings where even yoga classes qualified or adventure classes qualified, martial arts classes qualified, as long as there was a curriculum, an enrolled body of students, a faculty. So it's a lot bigger than most people think, but it has to be paid directly to the school. And then the other side of this is for medical expenses. Same thing, direct gifts made to the hospital or the doctor. These can be a fortune. This is a big tax loophole that's not used nearly enough. And again, I can't say it enough, it's unlimited. You know what that means? Unlimited. The, the money that can pass through for the benefit of beneficiaries is unlimited. And you know who loves this? Grandparents love this. Think about your grandparents' clients who have money, want to make gifts, and you know why they don't make the gifts? They don't trust the, that the beneficiaries won't squander it or use it for something foolish. You know why grandparents love this direct payments for tuition or medical? They know where their gift is going. It's going for the intended purpose, and they love that. They see the benefits of what their gift does immediately, and they know it's not getting squandered. So I would look at that middle column. Uh, most people don't use it enough. And the third tier of tax-exempt gifting, obviously, is the exemption. That's what I said before. You can use it during life as well as after death, but it pays to use it during life or lose it. If it's not used and the exemption goes down, you may not have the full exemption. Why? Because if you don't use it, you may lose it. Now, one thing to know, let's say you use the full $11 million and the exemption for some reason goes back down. Remember, after 2025, it's scheduled to go down to half 
the 5 million plus inflation factors, but let's say there's new legislation that brings it down to 5 million next year. Guess what? If you use the gifting and use that exemption now, that's locked in. IRS has already ruled that there will be no clawback if the exemption goes down in a future year. So what is the IRS saying? They're essentially saying, use it or lose it. So look at clients that have the wherewithal to make these gifts. Now, if they make the gifts, obviously this uses up their exemption, and that's not the worst thing in the world. This is something that certain clients can take advantage of. I'll bet you every one of your clients can take advantage of one of these three tiers of tax-exempt gifting. It's up to you to mention it to them. Some clients don't like to gift because they give up control. They don't want uh, the risk of divorce or creditor issues. And this is what I was talking about before. They like direct gifts, maybe made for Roth conversions or for life insurance or for business succession planning. It goes to a purpose. Those Focus on those types of gifts. But remember, I'm talking about cash gifts here, not highly appreciated property. Obviously, that you want to hold to death because it gets a step up in basis. But if you have property at year end that has declined in value, might pay to sell, take the loss, and then make the gift so you can lock in the loss. Everybody has different opportunities. So I'm saying it pays to use these gift, these gift limits now or possibly lose them later. Last item, estate planning. This is item seven of our big seven. Lots to talk about. You can see what we covered in this program. After the SECURE Act, there's no more stretch IRA. The first thing you want to do is see what the client's estate plan is. Check beneficiary forms. Have they named a trust? Do they have contingent beneficiaries? Most beneficiaries will no longer get the stretch IRA. They will be subject, most non-spouse beneficiaries, to the 10-year rule, except these beneficiaries. This list of what the tax law now calls eligible designated beneficiaries. Surviving spouse, minor children, and it's minor children of the deceased IRA owner, not grandchildren. Minor children generally means only up to the age of majority, which is 18 in most states, but there's a special provision up to age 26 if they're still in school. But after that, they too, they're back to the 10-year rule. Disabled, chronically ill individuals, and individuals not more than 10 years younger than the IRA owner. That might be like a brother, a friend, a partner, somebody around the same age. Everyone else, the non-spouse beneficiaries, are going to get the 10-year payout rule, which means by the end of the 10th year after death, the whole thing has to, be come out, has to come out. So you may notice by checking beneficiary forms that a client with a large IRA named a trust. Well, those trusts may not work anymore, may be subject to high trust tax rates, as you see here. The conduit trust certainly won't work anymore because at the end of the 10 year, the whole amount gets paid out right to the beneficiary, the very thing the client didn't want to happen. You may end up having to switch those to discretionary trusts where the funds can stay protected in the trust. But if that happens, any funds remaining in the trust will get hit with these high trust tax rates. So this is where some of the solutions I talked about before could really help. Convert these IRAs to Roth IRAs, withdraw the funds, do life insurance. So these are your advisor action items. It's up to you to contact your clients now before some other proactive advisor does. And most of the advisors are not talking about these things now. That's why I want you. You have limited time, but that's what I love about these action items because they have to be addressed right now. And as a review, the IRA distributions, maybe take some and take advantage of those low rates, even though RMDs are not required. Look at Roth conversions. Take advantage of those low rates or clients that need those CRDs, coronavirus-related distributions. I mentioned the net unrealized appreciation. Look for clients that have 401ks that have large 401k balances with highly appreciated stock. See if they have a triggering event, mainly being 59 and a half or separated from service. QCDs, isolate or identify the clients that qualify. Those are 
IRA owners or beneficiaries who are 70 and a half years old or older. Look at life insurance opportunities to turn taxable IRA money into life insurance. It pays to pay some tax now in many cases if you can get the money out at low rates. Look at today's gifting limits. I just went through all these gifting. Look at two types of gifting, the three tiers of tax-exempt gifting, and for the, the heavy hitters, the big fish, the clients with uh, 10, 20 million or more estates, Think about locking in, uh, getting that exemption out now, and even making taxable gifts to save millions in future possible taxes. And, of course, updating estate plans. That should be done with every client. How do you do that? You start by looking at the beneficiary form. That you should be doing with every client. What should you be looking for? What I call a life event. You have a birth, a death, a marriage, a divorce. You had a new grandchild, any change in tax laws, and we've had many of them. We had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the SECURE Act, really upended most estate plans, and the CARES Act. So you want to look at the beneficiary. For example, you might know a client that's already named a trust. That plan may, not lo may no longer work. And if you're not going out to the clients and explaining this, remember, this is in effect now. That client d dies, the family's going to remember the estate plan didn't work the way they thought because nobody updated them on the new rules. This is the opportunity you have. And speaking of opportunities, as you see on this last slide, look what we're doing for Financial Advisor Magazine. Now, you may think we covered a lot of information here, which we did, all actionable items. That's why I love this information. All actionable items. There's something in this list, our list of seven items, that applies to every one of your clients, contacts, beneficiaries, referral sources, centers of influence. It's up to you to identify this. Go back through this list. So this is one condensed program that we did. Can you imagine me and my team of IRA experts doing a virtual two-day program where you get CE credits? We go through all of these strategies, the latest rulings and cases, and it's right up to date with all the SECURE Act items, all the trust planning we talked about. Every one of these items we probably dig in probably an hour's worth over the two days. I think most people get 12 CE credits. That includes CPAs, financial advisors. Uh, attorneys, uh, insurance, depending on the state, but most people get the full 12 credits and it's all virtual. It's happening February 18th and 19th and those of you who want to get in on this and it's a great way to kick off the year, it's happening February 18th, 19th, you use that promo code FA Webinar, and you get $500 off. Oh, and by the way, in that program, you get our amazing 400 plus page manual that's to be used by you as a reference guide. Oh, yeah, we're going to go through that whole 400 pages at the program, but you keep it as a reference guide, and it would be right up to date. A lot of the decisions that have to be made in 2021, remember when the SECURE Act beneficiaries start inheriting, or the CRDs have to be paid back. We even hit you with the 25 IRA rules most people make mistakes on. So two things happen. We can help you do better planning with clients and increase your value with strategies like this, but two full days worth of these items and keep you from making awful mistakes. The key to this program is not to make you an expert overnight. The big comment we get for these programs is people say, you know what? Now I know what I didn't know. Now I know what I don't know, as opposed to the average advisor that doesn't know what he doesn't know, and that person's dangerous. This is your opportunity to provide tremendous value to your clients, contacts, future clients, beneficiaries. It's up to you. So this is available thanks to the folks at Financial Advisor. I hope you got lots of information out of this. I know I go fast, but I covered a lot of material. Go back at these seven items, a lot of actionable items where you can pick up big business and help clients have more, keep more, and make it last. So now I will wish you, believe it or not, happy holidays. We'll see you right after the first of the year, I'm sure, at another financial advisor program. And I'll turn it over to Evan, who made this program possible. So thanks to the folks at Financial Advisor. Evan, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Ed. Um, I was 
amazed watching this, seeing Sarah and Ian uh, answering about five to seven questions a minute. Anyway, on behalf of all of us at Financial Advisor Magazine, we'd like to thank Ed and his team for the presentation, and we'd like to thank all of you, well over a 1,000 of you, for attending today. Um, as a reminder, if you would like to submit this session for CE credit or attend another one of our upcoming web webcasts, please visit fa-mag.com for more information and have a great uh, remainder of 2020 for many of us. It can end soon enough, but um, enjoy the rest of the month and try to stay safe and stay well. Thank you very much.